Ranging across multiple continents and time periods, sauropods were a fundamental and massive component of their respective ecosystems, filling in a wide range of niches. A recent study published in 2021 by Dr. Alfio Alessandro Chirenza from the University of Vigo and colleagues found that after assessing a range of different dinosaurs, while ornithischians and theropods had a pole-to-pole -pole geographic distribution, sauropods appeared to be restricted to lower and more central tropical latitudes, at least a bigger majority of them, leading to implications of their physiology and their habitat preferences, and how the role of climate shapes their biogeographic patterns. Combining the fossil record data of these three groups, alongside data about the climate throughout the Jurassic and Cretaceous, factoring in plate tectonics and their movement over time, the researchers were then able to extrapolate from this a more clear view of dinosaur population dynamics and where they ranged, something which will be covered in more detail throughout this video. Dinosaur biome provinces, characterised by differing faunal compositions, have long been proposed before this time, particularly between northern and southern landmasses. Jose Bonaparte, renowned Argentinian paleontologist, put forward a biographic partitioning between the main clades of Mesozoic dinosaurs, which reached a heightened phase in the Cretaceous. A Eurogondwan fauna, characterised by the presence of Titanosaurian and Drabachisaurid sauropods, plus the Belosaurid and Spinosaurid theropods, was proposed to differentiate Gondwana and Southern Europe from the remainder of the Northern Hemisphere. Although now many of these original and endemic groups are now recognised and known from Laurasia, Gondwana still records to this day the highest overall richness in sauropods, particularly of Cretaceous titanosaurs. As the history of dinosaur samples over time, based on the previously mentioned statistical combination of climates and fossil localities, sauropods were noted to be lacking in both extreme latitudinal areas in the Albion 113 through 110 million years ago in the late early Cretaceous, e.g. the Arctic, Antarctica and Australia. Aside from the latter's northeastern area, with it being a sharp climatic barrier at around 50 to 60 degrees in both hemispheres, the last stage in the Mesozoic, the Maastrichtian, from 72 to 66 million years ago, shows an almost cosmopolitan distribution of habitat suitability for both theropods and ornithischians, with them ranging from northern Alaska to the Antarctic interiors. Areas of the world that while not been covered in ice caps like today were still colder environments with less than daylight, with sauropods once again being characterised by a sharp climatic barrier at around 60 degrees. While some examples are indeed known of areas close to this extreme, the incredibly small number of them, even remotely close to these regions, indicates that they seem to not prefer these more extreme northern and southern habitats. Their maximum range was reached during the Kimmeridgian through Beremian and Cenomanian through Tyronean intervals, both times when the Earth was at or near its warmest during the Mesozoic, with the prevalence coinciding with habitats that were characterised as semi-arid, similar to today's savannas. This more temperature-dependent distribution of sauropods has potential relevance to hypotheses of their biology and physiology, although more precise implications cannot be constrained without additional data, such as histological or geochemical correlates of their thermophysiology. Nevertheless, their pattern of diversity raises the question of whether their physiology was more efficient in warmer environments. It does indeed seem to explain the occurrence of some of the largest known sauropods, 50 tons plus, across South America and Africa during the Albion Cinemanian Hothouse, as well as some of the smallest known sauropod species, under 10 tons, in the late Campanian through Maastrichtian, which coincided with one of the coolest intervals in their evolutionary history. These higher temperatures seem to have supported a more diverse inland flora, while transient warming and cooling events during these intervals appear to have boosted the spread of savannah-type and geosperm-rich environments at the expense of conifer-dominated forest ecosystems which appears to have allowed for sauropods' proliferation. Given the available data, sauropods' predominance in southern landmasses and in equatorial areas across their evolutionary history appears to be a genuine characteristic of dinosaur biogeography, Africa and South America in particular from the intensity of sampling and recovered diversity in the study. A mix of features may have both helped them in their warmer environments, while also hindering them regarding living in colder ones. Their long necks and tails gave them a larger surface area to shed heat, alongside their extensive air sac system. Their strategies for keeping their eggs incubated and warm also appears to differ, with theropods warming them through sitting, with ornithischians seeming to rely more on the heat generated by decaying plants. Sauropods, meanwhile, in many cases, appear to have buried their eggs or utilised mounds, relying on the heat from both the sun and ground to heat them, something that would be less effective in colder environments.
A range of taxa also possessed filaments or feathers. That's one of the sisters in retaining body warmth, something sauropods, from all current evidence, appear to have lacked, with evidence of scaly integuments with osteodome like structures, even in embryonic specimens, making their inference for filament like integuments being even less likely. This suggests, at least according to the paper, that sauropods had different thermal requirements from other dinosaurs, and that they relied more on their external environments to heat their bodies. This may indicate that sauropods may have been mesothermic, intermediates between exothermy, cold bodies, and endothermy, warm bodies, which is consistent with having an elevated metabolic rate, but lacking a thermal set point. Heterothermy, where animals vary between self-regulating their body temperature and allowing the surrounding environments to affect them, is also a possibility, with them in other words, exhibiting characteristics of poikilothermy, where the internal temperature varies considerably, and homeothermy, where a stable body temperature is maintained regardless of external influences. In conclusion, this paper evaluates and gives an interesting glimpse into the spatial temporal biases on the distribution of these animals, with the methodology present in this study offering a new predictive tool to better understand not only dinosaurs, but a range of other animal groups regarding their habitat preferences and dispersal dynamics. All in all, I thank you for watching this video on these animals, and that you may have learned something new. If you would like to see more from this channel, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And with that, I'll see you next time, whenever that's maybe.